All right, everybody. So my name is Dr. Carlo Oyer, and I'm an emergency medicine physician. Uh, I currently live in Cartersville, Georgia. Uh, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, did medical school there, did residency in St. Luke's, Pennsylvania, and worked in Pennsylvania for a little while before going down to Florida for five or six years uh, in FSU area. And then now I'm in uh, Cartersville, Georgia, which is about 45 minutes north of um, Atlanta. Uh, I am the medical director of my emergency department, so I have my clinical shifts and I got all my administrative duties and then um, this, which is my hobby. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, the next panelist uh, in order of the screen here. Uh, we got Dr. John Gilmore, Dr. Larry Mellick, uh, Dr. Vaughn, um, Mark Vaughn, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves, kind of the same thing I, I did. So we'll start with uh, Dr. Gilmore. Wow, okay, kind of on the spot, huh? Well, um, yeah, I'm a family medicine doctor. I'm board certified family medicine. I had my own clinic practice in the uh, in my area in Tomball, which is uh, northwest Houston, for about eight years. And uh, after a lot of the changes in healthcare came along, I uh, I bailed on that and and joined another clinic and 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 love it. Uh, my training has all been in Texas and uh, uh, great schools and. You know, Texas Tech uh, Health Sciences Center School of Medicine graduate, and I, I did my residency training through a uh, uh, family medicine program in the Brazos Valley, which is uh, affiliated with Texas A&M. So, um, anyway, I've been here a long time, and, and I've been practicing for close to 20 years. And, uh, I got interested in, in YouTube in Brazos Valley, which is uh, affiliated with Texas A&M. feedback here, Carlo. Uh, there yeah, you go. Anyway, I've been here a long time, and, and I've been practicing yeah. for close to 20 years. Anyway, uh, I got interested in YouTube because I have a daughter who is... I have an idea. If yeah. the rest of us mute their microphones while you talk, that will probably work. Okay. So I'm going to mute myself and let you talk. All right. Yeah. Okay, great. Fantastic. Um, I got interested in YouTube uh, mainly because I have a daughter who was watching YouTube videos every day. And, you know, we actually set up a little channel and we were doing some fun games and things together. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And then I thought, wow, maybe I could do some medical videos. And that's when I started looking for different medical videos and, and seeing what was out there. And I saw your channel and I saw several others. And I thought, well, this looks like fun. This could be something I could do too. And, and uh, that's when we, you know, that's when we made our first video. And, uh, and it's been an educational process along the way. So that's kind of how I got into it. All right, unmute, and um, thank you so much, Dr. Gilmore. So you already went into the foul question. We're going to go to Dr. Larry Mellick, and uh, let's bring him on. Hey, so uh, I, I, uh, I'm a, a professor of emergency medicine. I'm actually in an academic program right now at the Medical College of Georgia, and, and, and it's Augusta University. It used to be uh, Georgia Regents University. They've had some name changes. I can't make up their mind. But uh, so, so I'm trained in pediatrics, I'm trained in emergency medicine, and I'm board certified in pediatric emergency medicine as well as the other two. But uh, my interest in making videos began back in 2010. And um, it, it just struck me that I could take a video of a, of a, pa of a patient and uh, share that uh, examination. I think, it, I think it was actually uh, de Quervain syndrome uh, video way back then. And uh, and then it, it, it progressed. It, it just continued to grow. And then I got my organization involved in it, and um, they evaluated. And you know, most organizations like uh, medical schools, hospitals, they they may have some anxiety about this sort of thing. Like we, we really worry about patient confidentiality, and and um, we have a compliance officers. So I got them to look at the channel real closely, and uh, and they they looked at it and they said, well, do we want this channel representing our organization or not? And uh, and it actually had a whole I think every lawyer in the university and the hospital met, and, and I was invited to the meeting. I don't know why, but uh, anyway, they they came out of that meeting and said, we we think this is good. This is good. This is patient education. And, uh, and, and, and that's, what I'm, that's, that's really what I'm all about is that to me it's like I think this is I've – been, I've been encouraged by people to say, hey, just uh, focus on training the doctors, you know, and uh, forget, forget the, uh, the rest of the audience out there. And I think that's wrong, I, and I push back on that because 
it's the it's the um, mother whose child has a nurse base elbow for the third time and doesn't you know it, it doesn't want to go sit in the ER for three hours waiting for a, a five minute procedure who can look online and see how to do it. It's the person who's going in for their cardio version the next day and it has a lot of anxiety and they can look at one of our videos and uh, and walk away and say, oh, that's not that bad. I think I can do that. And uh, so so I think, um, uh, and, and then it's the medical student who uh, is, is like in his first year and he's getting beat up because he's just in the books hour after hour after hour and he needs some he needs some hope that for the future and so they pull up one of the videos and say ah, there is I, I know where I'm going now I can be patient about this and then the other thing which surprises me sometimes is that is the person who is um, not sure what they want to do in life and uh, and I've had a number of people who come back and say, you know, after watching your videos, I decided I'm going to go into medicine. And I had one guy said, hey, I'm, I was accepted to medical school uh, uh, for this coming uh, session because of your videos. And uh, so, so and, and, and I think all of our videos are, are playing those roles. And I, and, and I think that, uh, and we're saving some lives too. I've got some, I've got some testimonials of people who have either written me or who have, um, uh, and asked for advice, uh, or or later on came back said I saw your video and I went and got myself checked out and I had um, one guy had a bleed you know had a uh, sounds like he had a subdural hematoma and wow. uh, and got that and, and just because he had, he asked me and I said you need to get in the ER right now so uh, so that's the reason I do this uh, and <clears throat> I think you know no I, people may not realize it but you guys all know. This is hours and hours and hours of work, you know, to try and be like a medical director or to run your family medicine program or whatever and make videos. This is this can be all time, all consuming sort of activity. And uh, and it's a labor of love because in the end you, you say, well, why am I putting so much time into this? And and it's it's when people come back to me and say, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I I um, I I passed my examination because I remembered your video uh, on that one question, you know, maybe that's hyperbole, but uh, so, so anyway, so that's, that's kind of my story. Uh, Dr. Melick, I followed you on EM News forever until I found out, oh, he's got a, a channel and stuff, and, and that's how I learned to know about you, and of course, we then started corresponding uh, on our, uh, my initial stages of video posting or something, but how my idea came is I was listening to some CME, some lecture about this guy who was saying that um, he asked the question, how long does it take you to get an informed consent for a lumbar puncture? Um, and people were like, yeah, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. And he said, well, mine takes exactly four minutes and 50 seconds. And um, we're like, what do you mean you know exactly how long it takes? Well, at that moment in time, he had a VHS with a lumbar puncture informed consent video. And he would take it into the room and play it. And then he went through all the elements of the informed consent and then we can sign it. And I thought, boy, that's a great idea. I mean, we never do a good enough job on informed consent, go through all the details, every time exactly the same. And um, I thought, what if we had one for central line, one for a blood transfusion, uh, one for, you know, any kind of procedure in the ER. So then I thought, man, we should make five or six of these uh, standard uh, procedural consent videos so that it's standardized across the board and uh, it's always the same. So that's how I started making my very first central line procedural consent video. And I did a lumbar puncture one and so on. Um, as I started doing that, I, I started thinking to myself, what if, I mean, I say the same speech every time I see a gallbladder patient or a kidney stone patient or a gastritis or a nausea, vomit, and diarrhea patient. What if I made enough video clips and I had them on a CD or I could bring them to the bedside and play it before they left the ER, would that be more standardized, more fun for the patient? I would save me time because they could watch it while I'm typing my instructions, go to them, and they've already been explained to and consented and they're ready to go. And that, that's how I started creating ED, stands for emergency department, exit for being discharged video. It was a, a patient education channel 
to, to do video education on their discharge diagnosis. That's how I started creating it. I did a lot of uh, internet searching and, and, and research about how to, how to upload them into the internet. And of course, places where they're private and you pay for hosting, and then they, but then they charge you per play. And I was like, um, uh, what, uh, how do I do this? You know, it's going to cost me too much money. I started building the website, edxitvideo.com. That costs a lot of money. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to put the videos for free on YouTube because I'll load them off of there. They do the hosting, whatever. If people find me, at least it'll cross reference to, to my website, which is what I was trying to build. And uh, in doing so, I found myself needing like stock pictures or stock footage of different procedures to use in my videos. And one time I posted an abscess drainage video of this guy with a big deltoid abscess and stuff. And uh, once I did that, then I saw uh, how much people got interested into it, how much feedback I got from people watching and everything. So, so that's what got me like, whoa, this is fun. I'm not just doing all the work. But getting the feedback, people are actually watching what I'm producing, and and that's how I ended up doing. It started as a patient education platform, that's edxvideo.com, and it's absolutely free to to doing this procedural, and then of course getting the feedback from students like Larry Malik say from nurses, from paramedics, and I say, wait, these people want to learn. They they want my opinion on this or that. So I started doing uh, education on that, and that's how I do it. So I think we got Dr. Vaughn back. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. I, I'm not in the same uh, echelon as far as number of views. or uh, Actually, I do have a lot of views as far as number of subscribers as other participants. Uh, I am a fan of all of your channels. Uh, Dr. Mellick, I interviewed with you in 1996 uh, for the emergency medicine program at Loma Linda. Yes, you had hair then. Uh, I didn't recognize you at first. Of course, I had hair then, uh, back then. That's when I was uh, applying for emergency medicine residency. I, I actually got into the Kansas City program and did emergency medicine uh, for a couple of years in the Kaiser system in California after uh, finishing the, getting certified in emergency medicine. I maintained my certification through uh, emergency medicine, but uh, I'm doing family medicine now. I have my own office here. Um, doing my own thing with my partner who's actually my nephew. He, he went to Loma Linda uh, for medical school uh, while you were there. Uh, Dr. Gilmore, I haven't had any connections with you, but I'm a big fan of your channel. Uh, so I've been doing family practice now on my own for 11 years and started the channel real seriously, actually just uh, really last year when Periscope videos were just blowing up and I was doing Periscope from exam rooms live with people interacting with the patients and that was exciting. But you'd, you'd max out at maybe 50 viewers uh, and then putting them on YouTube I found they were very popular so that's what kind of gave me the motivation to when we bought our own office and actually could make a little studio for studio videos to go ahead and make it a, a full, not full time thing but put out two videos a week and cut back on my patient schedule as we hired on a PA to, to cover some of the patient traffic. So that's where we're at now. Looking forward to a bright future, uh, collaborating with all of you and continuing to put out really good patient stories. I think what makes my channel a little bit different is I try to keep my, my videos rather short, try to uh, integrate the patient story a lot with it. Not as heavy on the education as some of the other channels. Um, it would not be something that maybe I'd suggest a resident go and watch like some of yours would be. Uh, but more of a, I don't know, I guess general appeal to the general public. Trying to kind of be more of a, instead of educational, intensely on the medical side, being more uh, for a lay person. Um, actually, Dr. Gilmore does that too, so I guess I'm not all that different. <laughs> just just uh, giving people a little bit of a choice out there because I just love doing it. And again, pleasure to be a part of this. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Actually, Dr. Gilmore does that too, so I guess I'm not all that different. Just, just uh, giving people a little bit of a choice out there because I just love doing it. Hi, right, Mark, if you can uh, mute yourself there and get rid of that feedback. So let's go to Dr. Gilmore. We already talked about kind of, well, maybe you didn't, or what got you started. I wanted you, uh, each one, and then moving down the panel, as to what got you motivated, what sort of things. So let's go to Dr. Gilmore. We already talked about getting the feedback. Well, maybe you didn't. Um, what got you started? 
So, so what gets you going where you get uh, something that gets you that Dr. Benton moment when you throw your fist down and go, yes, uh, or whatever. So let's get started down the panel. Yeah, for me, it's a good case. You know, uh, you, I, think, I think there's a couple of ingredients that make for a great video. Um, you know, and, and we have to ask ourselves, okay, who is our audience and, and what do we want to produce? And some of you guys are doing educational stuff that, that's, that's you know, a level above what I'm doing. My, my videos are designed for the average person that might walk into my clinic so that they can see kind of what's going to happen if they come in with the same problem. Uh, you know, and we all, you know, we all have that same kind of idea, I think, that, that there is an education aspect and we want to do that, but it's going to be entertaining too. So what's going to happen if there's a balance in there? Um, I'm looking for an interesting case or an interesting person or both. And so we want to make it interesting for people to watch, uh, something they want to see, but at the same time we want to slip in really um, you know, good information that can help them out uh, somewhere along the way. And so that's our, you know, that's our, that's my motivation. If I get, if I get a really interesting person, but maybe the case isn't that interesting, I'm making a video, because people like uh, stories. People like stories about interesting people. So we try to give them a clever nickname. We try to give them, um, and uh, we try to give them a little platform where they can tell a bit of their story, and you know, people get interested in that. And and so, um, you know, a lot of times we'll do follow-up videos on those same people later on because so many fans are like, hey, whatever happened with, you know, Shark Baby Seal or Cowboy or, or whatever. So we get a lot of that. And so people get interested in the storylines. Um, so anytime I have somebody that comes in with an interesting case that we can follow over a period of time, that gets me excited. Or if I get a really interesting character, an interesting person, not that, not that, I mean, everybody's interesting, but I mean somebody with a really interesting background or something that, that we might all find fascinating, that gets me excited. And, uh, and uh, uh, the opportunity to, to start a new video, um, a new stream of videos based on a storyline, man, that, get, that gets my week off. And it really is bright. I'll let you guys go. So um, I, 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 I love what John had said, and um, I struggle with uh, the, the issue of I will many times make some PowerPoint slides and make a PowerPoint video for educational uh, addition, but, but um, sometimes I think people on YouTube really just want a short cut to the chase, teach me something, and uh, – but – I get a lot of pushback from my organization, my peer reviewers, to uh, actually uh, add some educational uh, slides, and and it's it's all good. And I guess people can stop viewing the video uh, if they come to those and just don't want to see it anymore, don't want to read the, the fine print. But um, I'm kind of a believer that if people see something, the internet is so wonderful, they can just go read about it and, and fill in the, the the spaces, the blanks. Uh, so, so uh, I I I, uh, I appreciate what you're saying about and, and I and I think some of my most popular videos were the videos that were just real life and, and just like what John's doing and and uh, uh, Carl's doing too. But um, so um, the uh, uh, I I think I I think that uh, uh, having a mix of that type of video is good. So. Uh, what was the other questions I was going to? I did the answer. No, I think that's it for now. You know what? What gets you going? What gets you motivated? What feedback do you get from it? Yeah. Uh, so, so I, I think I and I'm like John. I, it's a good case. It's a it's an interesting patient. And uh, I think the other thing that kind of drives me a little bit is uh, I'm fascinated. That this is really a collaboration between the patient and us, and other, and teaching the world, and and I'm fascinated how people are so willing to do it. I mean, a lot of people may say, "Hey, you know, my kid would just mask their face," and and I'm more than willing to do that. But I I think the uh, I think in this day and age of reality TV, uh, one of my viewers is a reality TV star, and he he uh, was was joking with me. Uh, I have to tell a story in a minute. 
But uh, I think people, you know, with Facebook, uh, and when you come to the ER or go to go to the family medicine clinic or have a procedure done, that's probably something that's only going to happen once in your life. And to have it recorded on video, some people really like that, and uh, they can share it with their friends and family and and say this was my, this was my experience uh, at the doctor. Uh, so, uh, uh, but anyway, anyway, my my. Uh, um, reality TV star fan was telling me he was in the ER uh, because he had two broken ankles. Uh, I think he's in ice truckers and uh, I haven't seen that show, but at any extent he's, he was uh, telling the doc what to do. And the doc said, are you a, are you in the medical field? And he said, uh, no, but I watched one on YouTube. So uh, I, I thought that was cute. All right. So I'll sign up. Uh, as as the other guys have said, it's really those individual cases that just really make it something um, worth doing and reminds you why you do it. You know, to to have the <laughs> to have the the uh, trying to say it carefully here to have the patient. I'll, we'll, I'll use that term. To have the patient start talking as you're doing the procedure about how they castrate sheep and goats out on the ranch using their teeth uh, just out of nowhere this lady is telling you this <laughs> and to be able to have that be a part of what's going on as you're doing this incision on their leg to, to yeah. look for the, uh, the abs <laughs> that just makes it just worth doing to know that there's going to be so many people and then to see the comments of how much they love uh, getting a kick out of the, the, the person uh, as you're doing the procedure. That's what really gets me is when you get that, that magical symbiosis of, of uh, character with the medical. Awesome. Um, all right, so for me, it's like, um, you know, getting a lot of views on the one particular video, seeing all that feedback, people saying to me, you know, I've always thought about medicine, but boy, you really make me want to do this, or um, saying, boy, I wish more doctors were like you were explaining, and, and, and I try to tell them, hey, listen, I do this, you know, but of course I'm on camera, I know you guys are listening, you know, I, I try to be their camera or not camera, I try to be the same person, but, but obviously uh, I try to be humble about this thing, I'm not posting myself in videos to make myself bigger than I am or anything like that, I, I just truly have a passion for teaching and ended up in a community hospital where I don't do that much. So this really gives me a, an open forum to create all this educational material where, where um, people can learn. Um, one of my uh, biggest accolades or what I get most out of it is when I find a doctor on a conference or something and they said, yeah, I, I watch your videos. You know, I was interviewing a guy for a job and he said, he, halfway through the interview, he says, you know what? I follow your channel. I've seen your videos. I, it just dawned on me that I do, and and that was like a big wow, really. So what do you think? You know, from up here to say that they were actually watching to learn and see what I do differently, or whatever. Or my boss told me, hey, I was studying for my boards. I was looking up how to treat a felon to see if there was anything new, and you showed up. So I watch a video, and I was like, oh my goodness, it's my boss, you know. So, so that was kind of cool. I've, I've had the feedback from a patient showing up in the ER and go like, you know, I've, I've watched your video. I had a lip ring, and it got stuck, and I looked you up, look it up, and there you were. So uh, that, that's always fun, and, and that sort of stuff skipped me going uh, and doing more. Actually, the initial reason that I started doing edxitvideo.com and actually didn't pan out too much. You know, I still use it. I use it on, on the, at the bedside with an iPad and play the videos for patients to watch, but the other doctors really don't show an interest on it. Um, you know, it's, it takes time to do. Uh, so what I'm getting most out of it is really YouTube and the feedback and then now the collaboration with you all. Now to the follow-up question is what uh, gets me down. Obviously, you know, I've been a big victim of flags everywhere and my videos being uh, banned from YouTube or getting strikes on my account and stuff like that. And that obviously gets me down. You you get the trolls, get people putting really nasty comments. Oh, this guy, what does he think he is? Or he should have done this, he should have done that. And look at him, he touched the, the bed with the glove or whatever. 
Uh, so people are very critical, you know, you call them trolls or whatever. So it shouldn't get to me. I mean, we know enough about medicine that these things are minor things. Yes, they're taught in school about sterile fields or whatever. We know most of these procedures are not, uh, but, but people don't get that. And I found myself doing things for the viewers in the sense that I know they're going to criticize me for having my watch on, so I do take it off, or uh, they're going to criticize if I didn't use this kind of glove, so I'll just play to, to avoid all that stuff, so, so that gets me down. Uh, actually, it wasn't until about two weeks ago where my channel was just like fading, 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 and thanks to Dr. Gilmore and some referrals of his and some ideas, we got it resuscitated and it's back on the upstroke, so let me get back to John and mute myself. I tell you, I think there's there's a number of things that can really drag you down in this, and and you guys are all right. You all know this is a lot of work, and I I don't think that uh, unless somebody has a, a YouTube channel or or does this in some other way, then they don't realize how much time we spend doing the editing and putting this all together. So you know it is a lot of work. But things that get me down, um, the the troll stuff used to bother me. It doesn't bother me anymore. I'm kind of used to it. I think some people go on YouTube and they think it's their purpose to try to find a problem with something. I think they they think they're supposed to be you know putting something you know rotten on there. I don't know. Um, and so a lot of that I just I go ahead and just delete it and move on. Um, people really don't understand a lot of what we do and why we do it. But at the same time, it's good to have all those questions and good to have. Uh, people watching and saying, "Well, you know, why did you do this or why did you do that?" Because it's 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 led me in some ways to question a lot of the things that I do and why I do them. Because a lot of stuff we learn years ago, and we do it because we were taught to do it that way. It, it may not be the best way to do it anymore. Um, fans uh, have really taught me a lot in this last year since I've been making these videos. And they taught me if I send a patient home that's had a procedure done and they and they get pain medicine and antibiotics, for example, if I don't give them something for nausea, I'm I'm going to hear about it from fans. So just like you, you know, you know, if you've got to really let everybody know what you're doing, or you're going to get those questions or negative comments and say, well, you should have done this or you should have done that, and they're right. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, that's you know, that's actually a good uh, you know effect of. The, the doing the YouTube videos on my practice because it's changed some of the things that I do. I, I didn't used to routinely prescribe nausea medicine. Now I do. Uh, other things, uh, I had a patient, uh, I don't know, four or five months ago and needed a procedure done and I just didn't think it was going to be a very good procedure. I didn't think it was going to video very well so I didn't video it. Well, it turned out it would have been an incredible video. Okay, I mean, it really would have been good, and I was just kicking myself all week long that I didn't video that procedure. Now, that was that was a negative. Um, when I first got started, we had a problem with piracy, people stealing the videos and uploading them as their own, but that's basically stopped now, and I think having a good channel partner can help you with that as well. But uh, So I'm going to stop there and let you other guys go, um, but that's kind of been some of my stuff. I guess it's my turn. So, uh, yeah, I, to, to me, I just, I, I realize, I, we all realize that YouTube is, is a rough crowd. And so, uh, but I don't tolerate racist comments. Uh, and I know the rest of you don't either. I mean, those people, if, I'm just going to put a warning out there. If you put a racist comment uh, on, on, on my channel, you're going to get blocked. You're not going to, you, you're going to lose complete access to my channel. So don't go there. Uh, but uh, I, I think the critic, the, the kind of the hypercritical stuff. The crit, I mean, it's like okay, I got thick skin, I can take it. And and sometimes uh, there's nothing like uh, a good discussion, uh, a good fight, you know, to to uh, increase the in, the interest in the topic. And and uh, uh, I guess people say, well, there's no such thing as bad publicity, you know. But uh, uh, obviously, if the if the, if the uh, comments turn abusive. That's another reason you're, you're gone. You're off. And uh, uh, piracy. I guess I don't pay too much attention to piracy. Um, I think I've had issues with that. Uh, as you know, some of my videos. Uh, 
have have actually been. I mean, there's uh, there's some genital exposure and that sort of thing. And I I got dinged on at one time, but then I think YouTube finally realized this this is medical education, guys, and you know we'll make it age appropriate. Um, and and I guess that worries me a little bit still sometimes. It's like and I've actually I actually am very careful as far as not putting female genitalia on there. Uh, but but for like priapism and so forth. So uh, I, I think I think uh, in in general though um, the the negative comments that come or getting getting dinged by the by the uh, for for a particular type of video I think that's kind of part of the process of YouTube kind of learning who we are and what we're doing and uh, and and then I and I, I I've seen that just level out and there's really kind of backed off on the criticisms. Um, so, so that's, that's basically it. So. I, uh, sometimes can get a little affected by the, the feedback with the trolls and, uh, same policy as Larry. If people are abusive, if, if they're just spitting out vile and venom onto the YouTube comments, then, then they're off. I, they're just immediately, uh, blocked from the channel. But uh, if it's if it's a thoughtful negative comment, um, I, I can go ahead and put that in. If it's if it's some kind of production criticism, for example, one of my uh, early blackhead videos, the, the camera was not close; it was shaky work, and people criticize that to no end. And I leave that there, and it's kind of nice to leave that on the earlier video because then it shows the progression that's occurred over the time that we've gotten a lot better with much better camera work, much closer. Actually, the the thing that's been the best for that is just the ability to get it on a mobile phone, a wonderful image quality right there at whatever it is you're doing. And then we use the, the DSLR for the other stuff. Uh, and then the other side of comments is the, the positive ones that come in that can really make your day. And one of the things I've done is oftentimes I'll encourage at the end of the video for people to comment directly to the patient. And we've had wonderful outpourings of prayers and well wishes for the patients just that keep going when I ask for that, when it's a patient who's talked about a hard time. I think of uh, specifically Carla, who we discussed uh, her family, and she mentioned being able to see the grandkids, the children of her son who had died that year. And that just really resulted in lots of um, comments from the viewers for her I haven't been able to follow up with her to see how she, she felt about that, but I, I could imagine in her situation that that would be a very nice thing to see. All right, so we've already been going at this for 40 minutes, so I'm just going to skip the last question, just go to some last comments on each one. I'm going to start with mine, so once we're going with Dr. Vaughn, then uh, we'll be all done with this one, and hopefully we can do this, I don't know, every two months or something like that. And uh, obviously, individually, you can do some other things. Hold on, honey. Um, so, um, uh, for me, like you mentioned, the, the procedures and stuff. I mean, I the things that Dr. Malik has access to being an educational facility, I learned so much from it. Like, even in EM News, it makes referrals to some kind of injection, cervical injection that I was never trained to do, or using ultrasound for this specific thing, or he'll have some residents talk about the the different glues and which one's better to get the foreign body out of the ear. Those are just wonderful uh, clinical vignettes that uh, it's invaluable, the information and teaching I'm learning from it. Um, so so I learned from that. What I learned from Dr. Gilmore is that patient interaction and, and making it really uh, a story. Uh, from Dr. Van is the, the angles, the camera, the, the always the same ending. Uh, take care of your health or something like that he says so from each one of you I've learned a little something my videos I've always been focused on the area of interest and kind of limited to the education so I was afraid of the putting the patient's face or things like that as I felt more comfortable I started to adjust and make sure I have proper consent and that kind of thing and of course the dangers that goes with your filming a procedure what if something goes wrong then it's absolutely there and those things will happen Ultimately, it's my own liability, the way I think about it. So if the patient is willing and cooperative and he, he wants to share this, then, then we'll do that. Uh, the videos I put the most effort on, the really educational ones, get a 1,000 views. And the ones I put little effort and just the patient interaction is just interesting, and, and they go crazy. So, so that's what I'm learning from it. But I don't want to 
let that go because I feel that then I would be being untrue to myself and more true to what people want. So I said, if you like my videos, you're going to have to bear through the teaching because that's the whole purpose of me doing this. And so you'll have to learn something while you're watching this interesting video. And uh, Gilmore mentioned about the one patient you didn't record that you wish you had. And uh, it kind of goes to Larry Melix about genitalia. I had a patient come into the ER with, um, actually it wasn't a penile ring, it was actually a regular ring that they put down his uh, penis and he fell asleep, forgot about it and uh, of course the nurse practitioner got me in the ER, she's like, you gotta go see this, this patient's whatever is gonna fall off and I'm like, whatever, it's, it's fine, it's it, whatever. So I walked in and I went, whoa, I mean if you ever seen, um, hold on little guy, so his thing was like this big around, purple this big, and uh, to make matter worse, it ended up being a titanium ring, which is my always been, ever since I hear about titanium rings, my nightmare. I said, how do you make this? I mean, every time I meet a jeweler, I said, how do you break this in case I ever have to? But anyway, that would have been a fantastic video. Uh, but of course, I didn't dare to record something like that. So I just did like a verbal talking about what I did. And it ended up being using this big shears that they used to break into buildings and stuff putting enough pressure on the ring actually shattered the ring and I uh, was able to um, get it out. Uh, but but that was my one video that escaped that would have been tremendous. Um, uh, and then the teaching about it because within a week we had another patient coming with a titanium ring and now we had the tool available because we had bought it. This was in a finger, not in a, but we were able to break it or whatever. So in terms of uh, what I expect for this year, I expect to do a lot more regular patient interaction videos and then all my deep education stuff move it over to the ED Exit Video Pro so that people who truly want the education can kind of transition in that and keep the two separate uh, from each other. Uh, so I'm gonna go to John and then we'll move on and, and call it a day. Okay, uh, so this is my last one. Hey, when you guys go again, do me a favor. I really want to know what you're using for cameras. Uh, biggest challenge for me is is getting good video, getting getting good lighting, getting, and I've used everything from the the mobile phone uh, that you know, like Mark was saying, uh, to um, you know, we've got we just got an expensive Sony Handycam, and I'm just not happy with the, the quality of the video. So, uh, you guys, let me know what you're using. I sure appreciate it. Uh, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to do what I'm doing. I think uh, what I've got is is you know our thing is is uh, reality medicine so uh, our slogan is is what we get is what you see so basically I'm not really trying to pick and choose what videos I'm showing so much as it is anything that comes in uh, anything any kind of case or patient that comes in that we think might be interesting we're, we're gonna try to get a video on it so we're gonna keep doing that and uh, uh, continue with the doing the storylines and the interesting cases and and uh, you know that's that's sort of our thing, and and uh, you know we also I, I like to involve the staff as much as I can. Uh, they like being a part of it too, so it's something to think about there. Anyway, hey, I, I appreciate y'all letting me uh, you know join in, and and uh, yeah, let's do this again soon, and and uh, share some more ideas. I'm gonna let you guys go here. So um, the. Yeah, so my, my, I think my, uh, I, I wanted to talk about the colleagues a little bit. I think that was a good comment, and, uh, and then I'll talk about my plans ahead. But, but um, and also, John, I agree with you that, that uh, I've gone through a number of different cameras. I've gone through a number of different video-making programs, and it's, it's kind of like this uh, constant search for something just a little bit better. And uh, so, but uh, it, it's kind of fascinating, you know, the, 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 when I walk into work, it's like, hey, Dr. Malik, you know, um, you should have been here. This would have been a great video. So it's the video that got away sort of thing. I hear that a lot. But what was kind of fascinating, when I first started making videos, there was like, everybody was like, you know, there was just kind of some pushback. And it was like, oh, why are you doing this? And, and so my chairman was getting all these complaints. Hey, Malik's making more videos, you know. Uh, and, and thankfully, my chairman was supportive and, and understood the value of this. And, and now, uh, it's, it's kind of the, the dynamics have changed. And so that there is actually a degree of, 
like, hey, I sure want I want to be on one of your videos. Uh, uh, oh, there's some pride in the fact that that our our organization is getting some rec you know some recognition uh, for the videos, um, and um, so uh, I think uh, for for the future, uh, I think what I want to do is I'm going to probably continue doing the the educational videos because uh, we we have a fairly rigid compliance team and a peer review team, and basically just for the for the audience, this is how it goes. Uh, I, I talk to the patient, I find out if the patient has some interest or be willing to share a video, and then I explain to them, and I, I explain to them uh, that it would be on YouTube, and, uh, and then they sign a release. I have a fairly uh, clearly uh, written out. They can decide whether they want their face mask or uh, want their identity protected or they don't really care. And, uh, and then once I make the video, I run it past our compliance officers who basically say, uh, uh, no, you see some, which has been good. They'll say, you know, there's the patient's name tag showed up or something like that. And uh, every once in a while you, you, lose, you miss that. And then, uh, and then I, the, uh, uh, after, after the compliance people say, hey, you've met compliance uh, uh, expectations, then the peer team of, of about six or seven emergency medicine and pediatric emergency medicine faculty review the video. And, and there have been videos that, that uh, never made it off the cutting room floor because they basically said there's no educational value here or, uh, or it's, uh, uh, they just didn't think it was appropriate or, or they didn't, they, there was something they thought was negative. They thought the patient didn't completely understand what was going on. Uh, and and that's, all, that's, that's good checks and balances. And then lastly, we have our uh, um, vice president for uh, marketing and public relations who, who look at the video from the idea, you know, from the perspective of, of the organization, whether they, and they never, they, by the time it gets to them, this thing has been uh, so, uh, so uh, work and rework that they never say no. But, um, but, but yeah, so, so this, the process, um, as, as I started out before, I think is, really a collaboration between us and the patients. And I am so grateful, as I know you guys are, to our patients who are just willing to, to uh, ex you know, sacrifice a little bit of their, their uh, privacy and, uh, and, and, and to be on YouTube. Uh, and then uh, finally, hey, Mark, uh, I, I do remember you. No, I'm just lying. <laughs> so we, we interviewed back in 1992, is that right? I don't, your, your microphone's off. It, was, it would have been 96. It was 96. 96. 96. Yeah, Linda. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's heartwarming to meet somebody uh, that I had at least was acquainted with years ago. So nice to meet you again. So I'm done. I guess that makes it my turn. Thanks again for letting me be a part of this. Um, I have enjoyed the experience immensely. Um, now, John, you had asked about some of my equipment. I actually put it in our chat there, and I'll just run it. Yeah, we'll, we'll save it for another one. We'll go into detail in another one. But uh, I just want to say, again, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I look forward to doing many more and more collaborations with you. All right. Then I guess that's it for today. We'll, we'll do this sometime again. Thank you so much. I just put a note that uh, I've had doctors that have graduated from Dr. Melick's program, so they're like, oh, yeah, I know him. We, uh, he used to record, and he had me in one of his videos or whatever. And then I have scribes who are going into medical school now at GRU, so eventually they'll be meeting you. So I said, well, you make sure you tell them I'm, I'm the other doctor from Georgia with those videos. We've, we've communicated or something. So eventually you're going to get somebody saying something about that. So. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm sure this will be the first of a of, of, of few, and uh, people will hopefully the response will be awesome. That's it for today. All Thanks, right. Carl. Bye bye.